a very good afternoon to all of you uh, all the dignitaries all the members and uh, mangrove lovers those who have joined remotely and virtually for this national webinar on mangrove ecosystem understanding and conservation uh, on this auspicious day which is known as international day of the conservation of the mangrove ecosystem i thank the authorities of new education societies art science commerce college lanza ratnagiri the mangrove society goa and all other collaborators uh, with the effort of whom today we are gathering here for celebration of world's most diverse ecosystems that is mangrove ecosystem with respect to the sustainability tool for the betterment of coast dear friends today we are at the position where the coastal areas of our own state are flooded because of various reasons people connected to the larger events like climate change there are some geomorphological changes going on continuously along the coast at the same time knowingly or unknowingly we have disturbed the coastal setup the natural assets of the coast and today we are realizing the impacts of this intervention during the course of development what is the relevance of mangroves for today mangroves are the unique very special very restricted ecosystems of the globe and that's why they are vulnerable ecosystems their role for the betterment of ecosystem the ecological and economic advantages that it offers the goods and services make them special for not only the people from the coast but for the survival of mankind their contribution in the security of food livelihood of the coastal communities their ability to stand themselves identify themselves as resilience to natural hazards their efforts to protect coastline and the subsequent ecosystems known as corals and sea grasses we acknowledge always mangroves because of their great amount of diversity in flora fauna and microorganisms they have excellent display of rich habitats and in today's world as i said in the climate change scenario mangroves have greater attributes to protect us from various impacts like climate change sea level rise all the natural hazards which are appearing in the form of cyclones floods and there are many with this we will enter into knowing more about mangroves because the theme says we have to understand the mangrove ecosystem in the beginning let us start our journey we have already reached to the coast and we have to pray as per our tradition to two of the important gods one is sun who offers energy for the process of photosynthesis and other with special reference to mangroves which contributes to establish the tides and exactly the area which is getting flooded during the high tide and which is getting exposed during the low tide is known as intertidal region where this highly special group of plants grow naturally in the course of evolution we do not know whether they have gone ahead and came back and settled to this location or they have enjoyed their stay at the coast and they have stopped their journey in the process of evolution 
but we can find them where the land meets the sea. This is a remarkable ecosystem, group of plants, diverse vegetation elements, associated fauna and microorganisms. They carve themselves a very special intertidal niche for them. We understand them as mangroves. To know more about this mangroves, we have to know that a Portuguese term mango and English term grows is combining to form the word mangroves. They have evolved. The scientific studies say that the oldest records of these mangroves you can find from the fossils obtained from Tethysi area from the late Cretaceous. They are the specialized intertidal vegetation elements which have necessarily the property of resistance to the salt. They are biologically diverse and that's why regarded and respected worldwide. These are bunch of evergreen trees, plants. So any time in the year you can visit these mangroves to enjoy the beauty and the natural habits. These are timber yielding trees. That is another important feature or property of these mangrove elements. During our childhood, if we could not enjoy our walking in the mud, you are always welcome in the, as a scientist, as a researcher, as an observer in the mangrove ecosystem. Can I call mangrove or can I assign the term mangrove to a tree? Or it has to be recognized under the title of forest? Is it a community or it, is it an ecosystem? The answer to all this question is yes. Mangrove, the term is so diverse itself that I can assign it to a tree, a single tree. I can call that as a forest. I can also count it as community. And at broader level, I can also study this element as an ecosystem. Around 75% of tropical and subtropical coastal regions are the habitats for mangroves. Four continents and along seven lakhs of kilometer coastline available for these mangroves in the tropical and subtropical region. If I vouch its spread 32 degrees north to 38 degrees south at the corners of Australia, we can get these mangrove elements. They are occurring till date, whatever is known, documented, about 117 countries harbor the mangroves at their coast and they cover almost 1.5 lakhs of square meter area. If I display overall diversity of these mangrove flora and fauna, which is documented till date, plants are reaching around 200, crabs more than 250, fishes around 400, Mollusks more than 250, insects 450, and other species from various classes are reaching to 250. This huge number of flora and fauna or their elements make mangroves very special. And whenever we want to understand the mangroves with their peculiar features or key features, three prominent things come in our mind. First, what is traditionally explained to us that the germination of seed begins when the fruit is still attached to the mangrove tree, to the mother plant. And that feature is known as vivipari in English. And this viviparous type of seed germination is very prominent feature of mangrove. Aerial roots or the nematophores. This is another very important feature of mangrove because of the saturation, least amount of 
oxygen is available for the root respiration process and that's why these roots become negatively geotrophic or positively phototrophic and they come out of the sediment and on these roots you can easily find small pores through which they exchange the oxygen and carbon dioxide that is the reason they are known as pneumatophores the another adaptive mechanism that is observed in the mangrove plants is how they can tolerate the salt so there are different mechanisms explained with molecular evidences with physiological studies there are number of people working for so long in this domain to find out what exactly is making or giving the strength to these plants to stand firmly in the intertidal region where salt is imperative the access to this salt can be have the barrier so that salt is prevented to enter inside the plant system even if it enters can be stored it in the parts like old leaves or the bark which can be shed off in the due course of time or can we develop some glands which can remove forcefully all these excessive salt molecules from the plants these are the three strategies observed in all the mangroves but many a times it is told that viviparity and nematophores are the key features of mangroves but it is not applicable to all the mangroves some selective species show nematophores some of them they have aerial roots so there is difference in the plants with respect to their families all these properties like viviparous type of seed germination is not common in all mangroves but it is assigned to specific group of plants and this underlines the diversity in all the plant parts too that is very important aspect of the mangrove ecosystem let us throw some light on the diversity in root system as i said nematophores are the roots which are coming out of the sediments to have proper respiration in addition to that you can vouch for the aerial roots because these plants are growing in the intertidal region the sediments provide a very dynamic but instable kind of support in order to give strength in order to support the growing trees the roots have to take this responsibility and they try to support the growing tree trunks in addition to these aerial roots you can see the mimic of our knee like structure and that is the reason they are known as knee roots you can also see buttresses to some of the mangrove species so this i am only displaying the diversity in the root system of mangroves this is how the elements within the mangroves show the diversity not only in terms of their taxonomic features but also the plant parts when we go to understand the global or national distribution basically these mangroves right from their evolution it was observed that the native places for these mangroves is indomalayan region from where with the tide or tidal action slowly they have got introduced to other parts of the globe so india southeast asian country australia japan and east africa forms the group of areas where we can assign them to old mangrove regions subsequently these from these areas through seedlings 
the mangroves have got transferred and established to the new habitats in south central and north america florida pacific and west african parts of the globe so that group of region is known as new world mangrove coming to our own nation in our own country right from gujarat deep daman maharashtra goa karnataka tamil nadu andhra then odisha west bengal and the two areas andaman nicobar and lakshadweep known as islands we have more than 7000 km of coastline and along east and west coast we have luxuriant growth of this mangrove ecosystems in addition to these andaman nicobar and lakshadweep islands whenever we are talking about the greater landforms which harbor mangroves the largest patch of mangroves appears to be the mangrove vegetation or forest of sundarban now this sundarban is referred to when we have one third element of sundarban in india and two third in bangladesh putting them together that constitute a largest patch of mangroves in the universe so this is very significant aspect and we should be proud that we are part of the native or original places of mangroves and center for their diversification whenever i talk about diversity in india of the mangrove ecosystem necessarily there are 60 odd species 20 odd common associates more than 90 algae uh, found and recorded in mangroves and huge amount of microorganisms are also studied and recorded from our country in today's world why these mangroves are relevant to us i think this is not the topic to be discussed in today's uh, conference or webinar because everybody understands the significance of mangroves may it be odisha cyclone may it be tsunami may it be nisarga what we have experienced in last to last year you have any natural calamity along the coast that directly or indirectly relates you to the significance and existence of mangroves mangroves have contributed to each and every life aspects of the coastal people coastal communities they can be traditionally known as fisher folks so these mangroves are the areas which offer the habitats the landforms the areas the home for all the marine creatures organisms they provide them food shelter breeding and nursery grounds their intricate systems of root are contributing much into protection of the coast they will also prevent the losses of soil which is running due to the fresh water sources through rivers and creeks these areas can nicely be used as effluent treatment areas china is the country which has significantly used this aspect of mangrove forest they provide the nutrients to all the supporting systems in the coastal region they protect the coral reefs and sea bed sea grasses they protect the coast already we have discussed about this they are recognized as special coastal wetland ecosystems under ramsar convention also they are the significant habitats for aquaculture the culture of fish prawns and other organisms along the coast is possible in fact these mangroves are the crucial area sites for such conservation you have recreation benefits direct and indirect benefits that we obtain from this being evergreen in 
any part of the year you can very well visit this mangrove systems for recreational purpose i think if you explore the scientific and educational things research you will find thousands of references on each and every aspect about mangroves may it be medicinal value may it be importance may it be remote sensing and gis may it be tissue culture you name the area and you will find ample amount of references of scientific studies on this very precious ecosystem of the coast if i correlate the existence of these mangroves with economics a very recent uh, paper by paleo and uh, his group from usa they have listed down these mangrove forests which are less than 1% even 1% of tropical forest or even 0.4% of the total global forest the rate of their destruction is very high and 3 to 5 times of the other forest out of as per their calculation and recent studies whatever documented references we have there is a threat that we have to accept the fact around 67% of total mangroves are disturbed till date the coastal protection benefits obtained from these mangroves attribute to around 65 billion us dollar huge amount of economical benefits that are offered through this indirect protection scheme offered naturally for this coastal region the flood protection benefits only amounts to about 250 million us dollar as per their survey and that they have studied only from the small 20 km stretch of the coastal selected coastal sites along the globe they forecast that the loss of mangroves would influence around 29% of the land 28% of the people and 9% of the property throughout the globe this is very significant and important finding for our understanding regarding significance of these mangroves for the coastal cities like panama city you will find that all the settlement establishment will always start near the coast anticipating the fact that in olden times the waterways was the only mechanism and tool available for transport even in our own country out of four megapolis we have mumbai chennai and kolkata situated at the coast at this coastal sites mangroves not only sequester carbon they are absorbing the carbon dioxide and behave like lungs they are also absorbing the pollutants that we discharge and provide the services of kidneys so i can count them as lungs and kidneys of the coastal cities there are different habitats of these mangroves you can find them along the rivers along the creeks you can find them very nicely growing in the areas where the rivers meet the sea you have their occurrence in, along the rocky coast you have good growth of mangroves towards the sea facing the tide you have the growth of mangroves in the sheltered areas landward side they are also growing in the muddy or silty substratum these are different mangrove habitats that are observed so all the diversity of habitats except the sandy coast you will have occurrence of these mangrove elements along the coast let us have a quick journey of the plant species which are observed along the coast of our own state with reference to 
today's theme of knowing more about our own mangroves. The largest family and dominant species from where the term mangrove was coined. This is Rhizophora, Rhizophora mucronata, popularly known as mangue in Portuguese, as I say. In Marathi, it is known as Kandar. So Rhizophora mucronata, Rhizophora apiculata, these are the two prominent species that occur along the coast of our own state. In addition to that, if you go to the East Coast, you will have their breeds available. In addition to that, there are other species of Rhizophora uh, that are found along the eastern coast of our country. Another important genus is Brugera, which is also part of the same family Rhizophoraceae. And Brugera has very interesting distribution along our coast. Brugera gymnorhiza, you will find more in Ratnagiri and Sindhudurg, while as Brugera cylindrica, you will find dominating the coast of Thani, Mumbai, and Raigad region. So this north-south delineation, differentiation, distribution is very interesting for the people from ecology in order to understand how this distribution is guided by the climatic or edaphic factors. So these are the two species which are very nicely uh, forming their own areas of distribution. Candelia candle, another species. Today we are talking about the floods in Khed and Chiplun region. The confluence of two major rivers, Vashishti and Jagbudi, you will have a very good patch of this Candelia candle. Here, Aini Mete, most of the people from Ratnagiri know this place. And this is the area where you will have very good growth of this Candelia. As far as the state of Maharashtra is concerned, this is one of the very important mangrove species having very restricted distribution. And we are fortunate to have it uh, in the vicinity uh, of our institute. Another important genera from the same group, Rhizophoraceae family, is Cereops tuggle. This is known with a very peculiar viviparous type of seedling. Rhizophoraceae as a family shows all the genera and species with this viviparous type of seedling. Out of them, the rhizophora shows aerial roots, and here you can have development of buttresses to the cereops. In our own state, and if you go to other countries, you will find most of these species and the leaves especially are used for making uh, tea. So uh, what today popularly known as herbal tea, I really wonder why people call it as herbal tea, but still uh, most of these mangrove species like acanthus and this cereops is nicely used for making the tea. Another very important and attractive species for the state are Sonaricia erpetala and Sonaricia alba. There is another species, Sonaricia of Sonaricia, which is occurring uh, in Guva or the uh, Terekhol River, to be more precise. This Sonaricia alba is recently declared as the symbolic tree for the state of Maharashtra for the first time. And it is very nice initiative taken by the mangrove cell of the state forest department. These two species also observe a very strict mode for their distribution. So Narisha Petela grows luxuriantly in Thane, Mumbai and Raigad district. 
and in the ratnagiri and sindhudurg southern parts of the districts you will have good growth of sonaracea alba this is very prominent feature that is observed when we understand and study the distribution of mangroves along the coast let us talk something about the intricate relationship of the plant with the associate uh, faunal element these are the bats and this photograph is taken uh, just near to the um, ambitious plan for nuclear energy that is jaitapur these bats this sonaracea tree is full of these bats and the only reason is they are the important agents for the pollination so they are pollinators for this sonaracea alba and because they are active in the evening or during the night the flowers open in the night time and they are remain closed during day time this is how very nicely nature has adopted with all odds and adverse situation the existence is maintained the vigor of existence is facilitated through all these smaller adjustments even if we talk about the distribution of these mangroves how nicely they establish themselves very systematically in batches along the coast so rhizophoraceae family within that also rhizophora and uh, brugera like species they would prefer for the direct the tidal currents and they would prefer to grow and face the sea or just at the coast while as species like candelia what we have discussed would prefer the sheltered habitats toward the landward side so the viviparous seedlings if you measure the length of that seedling you will find a very peculiar feature the species that grow along the coastal region which will face the sea will have longer length of the viviparous seedlings as compared to the species which are growing landward side so accidentally if these seedlings are uh, carried to different areas they will use the opportunity or they will wait for the opportunity to find a suitable substratum either towards the sea or towards landward side and then only they will have successful germination of these viviparous seedlings so this makes these mangroves very efficient and very systematic in terms of their distribution all along the coast one of the very dominant species along the coast is avicennia popularly known as tiwar in marathi we have avicennia marina avicennia officinalis and avicennia alba these three species dominate the coast out of which avicennia marina is having very wide distribution all along the coast in old world as well as new world mangroves it is the most dominating species today for the mangroves and it is studied that it can survive in any odd situation it can tolerate the salinity to the extent of 35 ppm it can grow to most polluted sites it can rejuvenate itself even you cut these plants for fuel or for any other purpose the coppicing ability of this plant is very high so avicennia marina is one of the very important dominant uh species of mangroves for today's distribution there are other species like agisiros having very beautiful uh, arrangement of the flowers and birds the scented uh, flowers you have euphorbia which is the ideal raw material for paper industry that belongs to family euphorbiaceae and everybody knows that it exudes gum uh, white fluid 
which has antibacterial antimicrobial properties built within and uh, in the beginning what we have discussed that all these mangroves are evergreen plant so the rule establishes itself with exception so this exocarya is an exception to the rule so this is deciduous the only deciduous plant from mangroves the next one is acanthus which i referred to whenever we have discussed about salt excretion or even making tea out of leaves this is highly medicinal plant known as secondary element of mangroves so the moment you clear the primary vegetation from the rhizophora or avicennia or sonaracea you will find luxuriant growth of this uh, shrubby plants of acanthus this is very important uh, element of mangroves these days and that itself acts as an indicator for showing the disturbance of the original mangrove patch along the coastal region another important species is xylocarpus which again occurs only in ratnagiri and sindhudurg district especially dominated in uh, sindhudurg so uh, the southern part of the state you have associate species like lugnitzera which is again growing uh, landward side we have species like cyanometra ripa which is growing just next to the mangrove domain along the coast and <clears throat> another important only species of acrosticum we can say fern the only mangrove fern which observe in the southern districts again of the uh, the state uh, up to at the most the river savitri of uh, raigad district but in the north direction uh, you will not find this mangrove fern acrosticum aureus all these species are very important mangrove species in addition to that we have mangrove associates like sueda you have sesuvium these are the species widely growing in the areas where there are salty regions more salt is accumulated and uh, disturbed growth of mangroves is occurring or at the uh, line where mangrove vegetation reaches uh, during highest high tide we have species like salvedora uh, mostly people know the toothpaste meswak which is prepared from this salvedora leaves and stem these are some of the associates common associates observed uh, from mangrove regions whenever we talk about the diversity in animals right from the marine organisms right up to the crabs and fishes and mollusks and uh, birds associated birds uh, migratory birds because mangroves are the immediate restaurants for especially the migratory birds when they travel across the continents when they travel from one land to the other land crossing the uh, sea or section of ocean and then they reach to a very diverse place known as mangroves which provide them the first place to rest and also the mud flats the regions where there is no growth of mangroves but they are getting regularly exposed during the cycle of high tide and low tide provides the ample food source for these migratory birds so the animal diversity as far as our own area is concerned as i said sundarban is known for bengal white tiger uh, in orisha it is known as uh, known for crocodile we have also occurrence of wildlife birds uh, huge amount of um, mollusks fishes crabs observed in this mangrove areas whenever we clerically do the job of drafting or uh, putting 
indicating the distribution of the mangrove species we have around 19 species of mangroves along the coast of maharashtra and around 15 common habit uh, associate species spread along 68 different habitats including rivers estuaries creeks uh, backwaters all the habitats if you put them together and map them uh, for the occurrence of species you will find very interesting uh, gradients so there are north south gradients already we have discussed some species prefer to grow in the northern part thane mumbai thane now palgar mumbai raigad district and other species would prefer to grow in ratnagiri and sindhudurg so we uh, we in local terms call as tal kokan and var kokan so species prefer their distribution uh, in the southern and northern parts of the state why this happen if you see uh, with more uh, care you will find the long term observations of the weather data gives us idea that monthly average if you compare and the total amount of rainfall or rainy days uh, if you compare you will find the difference between minimum and maximum temperature so the range is lesser in the southern districts of maharashtra of the state and the number of rainy days and rainfall total amount of rainfall which is observed for last 100 years and the averages are taken that gives clear idea that the some species prefer to grow the more humid and uh, less uh, uh, the areas having less temperature range while as some species can uh, comfortably grow in the regions where the temperature range is more and comparative humidity is less so all the meteorological stations fortunately along the state we have one station established in today's palgar to the devgad in sindhudurg so we can get this uh, idea and ecological observation very significantly uh, stated as the distribution is governed by north south uh, gradient similarly if you compare uh, the distribution east west then from the mouth of the uh, river upstream and downstream till it meets the uh, sea you will find very typical uh, gradual distribution species like avicennia marina are very common uh, right from the uh, coast or the area where the river meets or estuary meets the sea to the area of upstream having or uh, influencing with the tidal currents so all these areas you will find candelia for example will only uh, be there where uh, the salinity is less so this is a salinity gradient which is established itself uh, with the height so height and salinity determines the distribution of some species of mangroves along the maharashtra coast this is a journey so on your left hand side corner we are starting from a zai river which separates the state of maharashtra and gujarat and on the uh, right hand side down corner we will have terokhol which separates the state of goa and maharashtra so this is the journey uh, all along the coast crossing all the six districts of maharashtra and it clearly gives us picture as uh, the height of the trees the composition of species the habitats that are occupied by these mangroves everything varies and that is the greatness that is the in continuation with this discussion let us uh, throw some light on uh, knowing more about the challenges before this delicate dynamic and very important uh, coastal ecosystem it is estimated that around 35% of global mangroves are already lost in last two decades and this is because of uh, the increasing human intervention the uh, habit of reclamation 
the type of uh, conversion of uh, mangrove lands into something else and which are mostly non uh, reversible changes very nice statement and observation uh, put forth by unesco in 1991 explains everything about this apathy towards mangroves by the uh, engineers by the scientists by the managers by the governments and developers so mangrove ecosystem is traditionally neglected by scientists under evaluated by the governments and destroyed by the developers i am quote this is uh, this is self explanatory uh, statement for the global problems of mangroves let us visit to some of the uh, photographic evidences to know about the destruction of mangroves it is type of conversion into the salt pans it is changing the usage of this mangrove wetlands very precious coastal systems into the extensions for industry extensions for residential areas extension for slums the areas required for dredging the sand from the uh, creeks estuaries rivers there are greater human interventions observed in the form of deforestation and this is very common Uh, not only restricted to mangrove forest but for all forest uh, probably deforestation is very important cause you uh, today's enemy plastic entangling the growing uh, seedling saplings of mangroves you have uh, traditional methods like slash and burn techniques where mangroves are cut and the dried branches and leaves are burned to uh, add the nutrients for the paddy field you have the process of reclamation uh, you have the industrial and the domestic sewage that reaches to the mangrove area through various uh, streams there are natural threads like secondary growth as we have discussed the growth the disturbance of natural mangrove habitats and secondary growth of the species like acanthus there is a loss of diversity because mangroves are respected for their diversity only one species is dominating and there is no existence of other species represents a very uh, poor state of mangrove forest the growth becomes dwarf as we have discussed though it is uh, the good feature for species like avicennia but overall it gives very uh, negative impression as far as the growth of mangroves is concerned there are some events like uh, feeding of mangrove leaves especially species of avicennia during specific time frame by the teak defoliator or hablea proera moth these are some of the natural threads observed for mangroves if you examine the developmental history of mumbai we will find that during britishers time till today if you count and uh, check with the kulaba you can see the seven sister islands were reclaimed for today's mumbai and this has probably disturbed a huge amount of mangrove uh, areas habitats uh, forests and of course the entire ecosystem today whatever small patches of mangrove areas remain uh, we have to conserve them and we have to uh, take an account for their good growth maintenance and sustenance for our future if you roam around mumbai from all sides you will find there is reclamation there is expansion of land there is uh, extension for industrial premises there is conversion into salt pan areas there is indiscriminate waste there is dumping of solid waste there is sand dredging all such negative uh, impacts are reaching and uh, they are appearing as greater threats to the natural growth of mangrove vegetation this is just a case study 
but instead of uh, having only discussion on the problems, let us try to find out some solutions. The newer techniques like tissue culture can be used to have more and more uh, number of individuals for plantation. We can have the raising of nurseries. In fact, as compared to other forests, raising mangrove nursery is comparatively easy. Uh, at the site of degraded mangrove lands, you can have a small nursery where you can encourage the uh, diversity. We can use the methods like remote sensing and geographical information system for the better understanding and management of these coastal systems. There are several efforts going regionally, nationally, and locally. Global organizations, as I said, the conventions and treaties, Ramsar International Tropical Timber Association is continuously launching programs on mangrove conservation. Various non-governmental organizations also work globally as well as nationwide, BNHS, Mangrove Action Plan Project, then Wildlife, World Wildlife Fund for Nature Conservation. There are individual or personal efforts through traditional wisdom, through our aspects of nature conservation, through increasing the awareness programs. We have joined hands with the government initiatives of the legal framework provided under various rules, laws, notifications for the protection of coast and in turn mangrove vegetation. There are various action plans and policies designed, developed by the state, by the nation, uh, after especially the tsunamis and other type of coastal. Why the conserve There is equal potential for ecotourism and across the globe, different countries have developed very nice places for recreation and enhance a very positive uh, tourism potential. This journey takes us a very basic understanding about this diverse ecosystem. I take this opportunity to thank all the organizers for today's national webinar. In turn, I thank my parent organization, College of Engineering Pune, Maharashtra Coastal Zone Management Authority, which has offered me the place to use my experiences, the Mangrove Cell of Forest Department, Wetland Complaint Redressal Committee, and various research organizations where I have worked on these very precious coastal ecosystems of the state. Uh, thank you very much.